the information we're about to discuss is for the ACT test and it's for the room supervisors and proctors who are going to be given the accommodations and EL supports testing and this is for spring 2020. In particular I need for you to make sure you have this manual in front of you and I want you to go to page um, 47 of your manual and on page 47 in this video we're only going to talk about the individual regularities that appear on page 47 in particular examinees who return who leave and return and then examinees who leave and do not return so they may be situations uh, that you're going to, have to deal with uh, for these two irregularities now your uh, test coordinator gave you this manual and uh, you went over you all went over the irregularity section. It is important that you go back and you read each of these sections, each of these types of irregularities. There are group irregularities and there are individual irregularities. For each of these irregularities, you will have to complete an irregularity report. And the irregularity report occurs See, it looks like this. The irregularity report occurs on page 127 of your manual. <clears throat> your um, test coordinator will have made multiple copies of this um, because there's only room for three, three individual irregularities and one and two group irregularities. So there will be multiple copies that you will receive of this form. Again, it is important that you read all of the sections dealing with the regularities. There is also part of the regularities that discusses prohibitive behaviors. And that prohibitive behavior begins on page 50. For example, student uses a cell phone. That's a prohibitive behavior. Student uses an incorrect calculator. That is a prohibitive behavior. Now, when we talk about irregularities, some of these information, some of the irregularities will be prohibitive behavior. It is important you understand this. Do not void, do not void an answer document for any other reason other than prohibitive behavior. Only prohibitive behavior are you going to void an answer document? If a student leaves early, you're not going to void an answer document. If a student refuses to continue testing, you are not going to void an answer document. If a student asks that the answer document not be scored, you are not going to void the answer document. Um, so if, if a student leaves and comes back during the test, you are not going to void an answer document. All right, so keep in mind, the only time you're going to void an answer document is for prohibitive behavior. Okay, and in your um, and just if, if if a prohibitive behavior occurs, you you do need to discuss this with your test coordinator. All right, now <clears throat> let's go back to the situation where examinees leave and return. Now the reason I want to discuss this is this. Any time a student goes to the restroom, goes to the restroom, you must complete an irregularity report. The test is not voided, but you still must complete an irregularity report. So it is to your best interest, especially if the test is not a very long test, that you discourage students from going to the restroom. And also keep in mind that if when a student leaves the room, only one examinee may leave the test room at a time. If two or more examinees need to leave the test, uh, test at the same time, or if other rooms have been dismissed, the examinees must be accompanied by a proctor. Do not leave a test room unsupervised at any time. Okay, so if an examinee leaves for the restroom, you must, you must do an irregularity report. All right, so let's suppose an examinee goes to the restroom. What do we do? All right, now another thing, keep in mind, if the examinee becomes ill, 
Now, you'll see here an examinee feels ill and needs to leave the room. Now, there are situations where an examinee feels ill, leaves the room, goes to the restroom, comes back, and feels fine. Uh, it could be anxiety, whatever it may be. That's fine. Now, there are situations right here where examinees leave and do not return, where an examinee um, becomes ill, okay? The examinee becomes ill, leaves the room, and must go home. In that case, in that case, um, the examinee is going to do the makeup, and we're going to talk about that in a little while. Okay, but let's focus on this part here. The examinee leaves and return. Okay, so in both cases, you're going to collect and secure the examinee's test materials. So the examinee needs to leave the room. Do not leave the test materials on the student's desk. The, you pick up the examinee's test, test, test materials and you secure the examinee's test materials. When the examinee returns, you give the test materials back to them. All right, now this is important. Number two, time the examinee's departure. So on another sheet of paper, you're going to say, you're going to say, um, let's say it's student A. So this is test two, let's say. Student A. Student A left at 9.05, returned at 9.10, went to the restroom, let's say, or didn't feel well, just, just went to the restroom, wasn't feeling well, came back at 9.10. That's five minutes. All right, so you must record that. You must, you must record when the examinee leaves and when the examinee returns. So you can indicate on the irregular report how many minutes were lost. All right, so time the examinee's departure. Record the lost time on the irregularity report. So again, you must do this. Let's say you had student B and student B, and let's say this is a test where, where um, multiple tests were given in one day. Now, again, th this is accommodation, so there are situations where, where one test will be given per day. There are timing codes, though, there are timing codes where all tests are given in one day for accommodations, like EL supports, um, time and a half in one day. Um, there are situations in which your schedule in which you may do in which you may do test one in one day, test two in another day, and then test three and four in one day. All right, but keep in mind that that uh, test one must be done first, test two must be done second, test three must be done third and then test four must be done last. All right, so student B leaves, uh, let's say test three, 11.05, comes back at 11.25, you must record, you must record how much time was lost in test three, and then how much time was lost in test four. You must record that, okay? So let's say test three, the student left the last six minutes, and then test four, the student lost the first, let's say, four minutes. That's a total of 10 minutes, all right? But on your regular report, you're going to see how to write this. Six minutes and four minutes is really what you should write. Okay, so let's look at some examples. All right. Um, oh, by the way, <clears throat> if the examinee returns during the same test, have the examinee continue testing where they left off. So that's important. Have the examinee continue where they left off and stop when time is called. So that five minutes, they lost that five minutes. So that's five minutes that is lost. They cannot make that up. So if time is called, time is called. They've lost that time. So that's why it's important that you discourage, you discourage students leaving if they just want to go to the restroom. Now if they become ill, that's a different story. But if they say I need to go to the restroom, say uh, just inform them that that time will be lost. Okay. Now, number four, if the examinee returns during a later test, so that's this situation right here. All right, so student leaves at the end of test three, student returns sometime at the beginning of test four, let's say. So if a student returns during a later test, do not let the student uh, examinee go back to a previous test. So in other words, if they come back at test four, during test four, they cannot go back in test three. They cannot go back in test three. Um, do not let the examinee go back to a previous test. Have the examinee start the current test 
and stop when time is called in the room. Lost time cannot be made up. Now remember, on your room report form, on the room report form, okay, so on the room report form, remember uh, on this form you will have you will have completed some information here. So the student left at, um, at the end of test three and came back in test four, you would indicate how many ovals have not been answered. So there's, let's say, 10 ovals for that student. You'd put 10, and then um, if during test four you notice that, you notice that um, the student answered all 10, then that test is voided. So that's a prohibitive behavior, and that's, that's a different situation, okay? So, so uh, walk around, monitor what's happening in the classroom to make sure that this doesn't occur. So if a student leaves, if a student leaves during test three and they still have some ovals blank, you got to make sure you report this. It is possible that if a student comes back during test four, they could do a prohibitive behavior where they go back and complete information and that's where you could, you could uh, catch that. So they cannot go back. They cannot go back and, and um, make up that lost time. They cannot go back and, and during test four and, and kind of bubble stuff in either. Okay? All right. So, um, all right. So again, in both cases, in both cases, they cannot make up lost time. So let's look at, at how to complete this irregularity report. So, so um, you have a regular report. Now, if a student goes to the restroom, if a student goes to the restroom and comes back, all right, remember we're talking about student uh, leaves and returns. Student leaves and returns. So let's say a student goes to the restroom, and there are two students that went to the restroom during the testing. So you, you got to make sure that that your um, school name's here. You got to have all this completed. All this has completed. Do not leave anything blank. You have your school name, the uh, room, the ACT uh, high school code, the state, city, and the test date. So this is March 17th. You do March 17th. You must have the student's name. Now the, this says test booklet form and serial number of examinee's test booklet. So you put the test form, test booklet form here, and the serial number of, of the booklet. Um, now you can get that from here. So remember when you did the room form you had to do this. So you can get that from here. Um, then you put the time that the irregularity occurred. So the student left test 2 at 9.05. You would put 9.05. You put the, I just put test 2. And then th there's nothing in here for restroom break, uh, for student going to the restroom. So you just put other. You put other. And then is the examining schedule for makeup? You put no, because the examining is not going to do the makeup. And then the test is not voided. Remember, the only time you void a test, the only time a test is voided is for prohibitive behavior. This is not prohibitive behavior. Student goes to the restroom, comes back. Nothing happened in, in uh, between. Student did not do a, use a cell phone. Student did not take pictures, whatever. Student went to the restroom, came back. All right, that's not prohibitive behavior, so you got to put not voided. All right, so then you got to do an explanation. You got to have an explanation. You cannot leave that blank. So you just say something like, student went to the restroom, came back during test two, remember left during test two, came back during test two, and then you would say lost 10 minutes. Jane Doe, same thing. Uh, so you have the form number, the serial number, uh, the, the uh, time the, the regulator report, the time the student went to the restroom, and then um, you would put test three. Again, you put other. You put other. The student is not going to do the makeup, so you put no. And then remember, the test is not void. The only time you void a test is for prohibitive behavior. And then you would just say, student went to the restroom, left during test two, came back during test four, and then you would say, lost eight minutes on test three and five minutes on test four. So just kind of like like that situation that we had earlier. So you'd say student B, remember you got to do this, you got to time that student, test three, test four, say how many minutes they lost in each case. All right, now let's look at another situation. 
Um, another situation would be something like, like this. Um, so let's say the student became ill. All right, student became ill. So you would say, uh, again, you got to fill all this out. All this out, you got to, all this information has to be completed. So you put John Doe. Again, you got to have the booklet f uh, form and the serial number the time the irregularity, irregularity occurred, and the test. And remember, the student comes to you and says, I'm not feeling well, I need to go to the restroom. No, you're going to say illness. The student said he wasn't feeling well, uh, illness. Um, the student uh, is scheduled for makeup. Um, oops, I meant to put no. The student's not scheduled for makeup because the student comes back. All right, so I'm going to put no. Put no here and then not void because the student came back so the student becomes ill during test two returned during test two all right so lost six minutes so it's possible the student says i'm just not feeling well the student could have anxiety i'm not feeling well so I just went outside for a little while came back all right that that happens all right but remember uh, students not do the makeup so make sure you put no here all right so that's another scenario then let's look at this one um Let's look at this scenario. So remember, there is a part where a student does not return from break. So remember, there are timing codes where where you do test all four tests in one day. So there is a break. There is a break between test two and three. All right. So. Let's suppose the student goes to break and that student just doesn't return, doesn't return at all, just skips the rest of it. All right, so the student skips the rest of it, it's still a scored document. All right, so you would say this. You would say, um, let me find what I did with it. So still a scored document, you would say this. You would say um, on your regulator report, Again, you fill all this out. You would say Jane Doe. Um, this information needs to be completed. Uh, the time the regular uh, occurred, so you'd say 940 slash break. And you would say other because there's nothing in here that indicates student that return after break. All right, so you would just say other. And then uh, students not going to do the makeup. So you say no, and the test is not voided. Remember, the only time you void a test is for prohibitive behavior. That's the only time. All right, and you just say something like, student did not return after break. That's all you do. All right, so if a student doesn't come back, then the student doesn't come back. You're not going to void it. You're not going to void the answer of it. You just say not void it. All right, and this document is going to be scored. Okay, so... Uh, make sure you understand this part. If you still have any questions, ask your test coordinator. All right, now let's look at this part. Student uh, leaves, examinee leaves, and do not return. So it is possible the examinee could leave and not return. So for example, uh, examinee becomes ill and cannot continue testing. The examinee does not return after break. And the examinee leaves before testing is completed. So those are all examinees. Uh, all examples of, of examining uh, who leaves and do not return. Okay, now before we go on, let's read this note. <clears throat> Examinees cannot return to an incomplete test. So, for example, let's suppose that that on day one, the examinee test, uh, takes test one, leaves during the end of test one, let's say, and doesn't come back. The examinee comes back for test two. The examinee cannot go back to test one, just like this situation here. The examinee cannot go back. Time is lost. They've lost that time. They've lost the ability to go back and, and complete that test. All right. It examinee's best interest to either complete a test before leaving or not begin a new test if they feel they may, not, uh, they may need to leave. All right. What that means is this. So remember, we're doing accommodations here. We're doing accommodations. So let's say on day one, um, the exam, remember day one, I, I should say test one. Remember, it must be done in order, test one. So let's say um, 
it's the last few minutes of, of the session uh, of the test of test one and the examinee is just not feeling well there's only like five questions left it is to the examinee's best interest if they complete those five questions complete those five questions because if they leave and time is called and they come back the next day test two the next day they cannot go back and do an incomplete test see this test is not completed they cannot go back and do this so so they lost that time now you would make sure that on this part here if this is test one on this part here uh, let's say this student you would say student uh, didn't answer five questions all right so so you got to make sure you still complete this part here okay now let's go back over here so uh, again examinees cannot return to incomplete tests it examinees best interest to either complete a test before leaving or not begin a new test if they feel they may need to leave right, let's go to the next page all right so examinee examinee comes to you says that they're not feeling well so you collect and secure the examinee's test materials if examinee does not come back you do not get back you, there's nothing to get back to the student all right now if the, if testing in a single day so remember there are timing codes there are timing codes where where you're doing all four tests in one day so the side of the test should be scored or examinee should be scheduled for makeup testing so uh, discuss this with your test coordinator decide if test should be scored or if the examinee should be scheduled for makeup testing if testing over multiple days if testing over multiple days schedule examinee to complete the remaining test in sequence in sequence test one test two test three test four in that order within the testing window okay so let's look at some scenarios some examples of these okay now I do need to go back to this and, and, I, and I apologize I forgot about this um, examinees returns late from break I kind of said something earlier remember I showed you this right here um, student did not return the break that's for this scenario here I forgot to, I, I showed you the wrong one for this so uh, if you have an examinee who returns late from break and it is possible um, that's why it's important it's important that you have proctors when students go on break it's important that you have proctors that are monitoring uh, students in the hallway so that way when you're ready to get started uh, you get those students back in quickly but it is possible that a student could come back to test three remember they return late from break that's test three that they could come back um, to uh, test three late and so so you would just say this you would say again all this has to be completed um, you would say student came back late after break and then you'd say lost eight minutes on test three all right so students came back late after break and lost eight minutes on test three okay now let's go back to this one so again um, if a, if examinee leaves before testing is called or examinee becomes ill and does not and cannot continue testing or if examinee does not return after break um, then make sure you follow you follow these steps here okay, follow these steps okay now when filling out so let's say you have an examinee who does not return after break you're giving all tests in one day so again you, you just say you just say student did not return after break um, you say other this examinee is not scheduled for makeup and the test is not voided the test is still scored okay so that's that's one situation. Um, let's look at the, the suppose you have an examinee who becomes ill and cannot continue testing. All right, so let's look at that example. Okay, so you have uh, again fill out all this information. So you have the student's name, all this right here. So um, so let's say the student became ill. All right, so you say illness. Now the student doesn't come back. If the student feels ill enough to where they where that student has to go home, 
the student will schedule makeup. So you're going to say yes here. So again, student becomes ill during, a t during uh, test three, let's say, cannot come back, does not come back. Student uh, it has to go home, does not come back. The test coordinator will schedule a makeup. So you can say yes, and the test is not voided. So the, the test coordinator, you don't void a test. Remember, the only time you void a test, the only time you void a test is if, is if uh, there's prohibitive behavior. Student got, got ill, had to go home. That's not prohibitive behavior. It's an irregularity, but it's not prohibitive behavior. All right, so you say student became ill during, during test, um, this was test three during test three and then did not return. That's all you write. And then the test coordinator will do the rest for the makeup. Okay, so again, um, if the student becomes ill, you could have that situation. If the student becomes ill, does not return, the examinee will do a makeup and the test is not voided. All right, test is not voided. Okay, so that that should uh, give you enough information on how to complete these forms. Now, let me just say one thing. If a student becomes ill during the test and is unreturned, only, only for for that irregular report, only have that student listed on one page. Don't don't have anyone else because because that irregularity report has to be attached to the um, answer document. All right. So if a student becomes ill, does not return, do um, just have that information on one irregular report. For for the others, for example, when we did this one where where a student went to the restrooms, you can have you can have a list here. Because because this is not being attached to an answer document. This is not being attached to the answer document. Anytime you do an irregularity, you fill out an irregular report and it has to be attached to an answer document, um, then just just have only one item listed. I have only one item listed. Okay. All right. So that's going to take care of um, these these two types of individual irregularity: examinees who leave and return, and then examinees who leave and do not return. All right. And then just uh, make sure you know in each in each case the steps you're going to take. In each case, the steps you're going to take. Okay, if you have any other questions on this park right here, uh, discuss that with your test coordinator.